Here is the turbine itself. It is a three-bladed, small, what we call a micro turbine. It's an upwind horizontal access turbine, meaning this is the direction of the wind flow across the blade set. All the controls are up tower in this component right here, the circuit card and rectifier block. There is no down tower controller. Here is the yaw that allows it to spin or yaw 360 degrees on the tower. As the wind pushes on the tail, it keeps the turbine on the wind, as we say, and allows the turbine to be in the optimum direction for the most power per, to, to be able to be per, produced. Here's the turbines. This is a land turbine, and this is a marine turbine. The basic difference is this um, marine turbine has this white aircraft quality paint, um, and it has a, a basic... Uh, uh, and the and the land turbines have this basic gray cast aluminum housing. All the turbines are aluminum, not plastic. Um, this is your black plastic. This is your black blade set, which is a fiberglass plastic composite. Um, the marine turbines do come with a stop switch and are 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 rated for a marine corrosive environment. Our most 99% of our turbine installations are what we call hybrid installations, meaning that you're combining solar and wind together, uh, right? The solar through the PV charge controller, through your fuse, your breaker, your battery disconnect, and then down to your battery bank. Um, the turbine works seamlessly with the PV. Um, so if there's clouds or if it's nighttime or if it's weather conditions and so on, you're going to, or if, uh, when there's wind, obviously, you're going to have the wind turbine also charging the battery bank. Notice there's no down tower controller here because all the controlling is done up tower inside the body of the turbine, inside the nacelle of the turbine. So all you really need between the turbine and the battery bank is a stop switch and a breaker. Those are recommended items. We all, to make that easy, we have this wind control panel, uh, which comes in kits with our turbine. It combines an analog ammeter, this is just like a little fuel gauge ammeter, right? A stop switch or a stall switch, sometimes we call it, and a breaker. And it just makes for a really easy wiring. We also have an enclosure for it if that is needed as well. Here is the um, idea of our systems. Hybrid systems are complementary. So in the summer, you have lots of wind, lots of sun, not a whole lot of wind. But in winter, that's the opposite effect. Lots of wind, not a whole lot of sun, like a lot less sun hours in the winter months. You also tend to have more storms and so on. So that's how the multiple charging sources is a good idea for an off-grid system. All of our turbines are off-grid uh, battery charging turbines designed for uh, small battery bank applications. Um, it does, wind resource matters, right? So what we recommend is a minimum of four meters per second or greater of winter wind speed uh, for you to be uh, have a hybrid system. So you can see by this map, the darker the blue color, the better, the, the higher the wind speed. Um, there's lots of good, there's lots of places in the United States, in fact, all over the world, North America as well, that, um, that, there, uh, that there is good uh, wind and above four meters per second of winter wind. And again, we concentrate on winter wind because that's when you need the additional power in a hybrid system. And again, you're looking for about four meters per second or greater of winter wind, and you're a good candidate for a hybrid system. Um, this is kind of what part of the report would look like. You get the uh, monthly distribution, January through December, and you can see here, this is a good site at over five and a half or about six meters per second of wind. Um, in addition, you get the um, what we call the wind rows or the power rows. It tells you what direction the wind is coming out of, and that's good for sighting. So you want to sight your turbine based on on where the wind is coming from. Look, you know, trying to minimize those objects that are going to cause turbulence. In my w full webinar, my 55-minute webinar, I talk more about tower height turbulence, um, siding the turbine, and the particular details behind that. Really what we're looking for is to keep those batteries happy. Here is a Trojan brochure. Uh, most systems in the off-grid world want to have a maximum depth of discharge of 50%, but if you're adding a wind turbine into that paradigm, into the mix, 
um, you could get that max depth of discharge closer to 30 or 40. And you can see how this curve is much more vertical. That means you're going to get more cycle life out of that, of that battery bank. The more cycles, the longer that battery is going to last. So if you can stay in this range as opposed to this range, you can see you're going to get, you know, 12, 18, 24 months longer out of that battery bank than you would if you just had a solar only system. We've been around for a long time, starting in 1995 with the Air 303, and then in 2015 we launched the Air Silent X. So lots of generations of improvements. Um, we're the by far the largest seller of small wind turbines out there on the market. We're now over 160,000 units sold. Generations of improvements, you can get parts and pieces anywhere in the world. Our turbines are on every continent. So we've been around for a long time and so very accessible. Let's just look at a few installations and um, of, of different ways you can install the turbine. This is a, a common uh, off-grid cabin with a 45-foot guide tower. Uh, off-grid battery charging cabin utilizing solar and wind to provide some lights and water pump and so on. Here's a, obviously a very remote application. We do a lot in very remote places all over the world. Um, sailing. This is a 11-foot um, mast and stay kit right here, the Air Breeze turbine. Uh, parking lot light application here. This is in Colorado. Uh, oil and gas. Do a lot with uh, oil and gas, uh, small SCADA systems for oil and gas. Makes a lot of sense, especially in North Dakota, West Texas, South Texas, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, and so on. Um, lots of good wind in those places. Here is a very remote application in Antarctica. You can tell by the vertical solar panels, the bottom of the world. If you're installing multiple wind turbines, you want to make sure the downwind turbine is either above or below the upwind turbine so you don't have that downwind shadowing effect and reduce the power output of the downwind turbine. Uh, buoy applications, lots of we do lots of work with the, this type of application. Again, two different elevations for the turbine. This is obviously a hybrid system. Telecom, do a lot with telecom. Uh, railroad, positive train control as well, utilizing wind and solar for these off-grid remote applications. RVs, people will use our turbine uh, for boondocking and RV applications. Uh, and obviously here you can see a very remote application in Alaska. This is a science monitoring station Solar panel not doing so great, but that wind turbine spinning very well. So thank you again for your time on the speed uh, webinar today. And